I'm Ryan Kurtwright with Symmetrics. I'm a technical sales engineer there, handle support and pre-sales calls. I'm here today to give you a demonstration and cover some of the key new features and benefits of our new Simnet Composer 2.0 software that should be released um, very soon. So I'm going to just hop right in. Some of the features I'll just cover and make sure that uh, I tell you what they do, show you how maybe what it looks like. Other uh, features, I'll open up SimNet Composer and give you a live demo. Um, moving on, I'm just going to do a quick rundown, I guess, of at least uh, kind of the three of the big key ticket items and but we'll look at everything individually and and um, all of the different uh, features that we've added so some key features the first thing to notice is that we've now added uh, Dante third-party device integration into SimNet Composer um, so this means that you can now uh, program and set up third-party Dante products inside a Composer without ever leaving Composer. Um, most notably right now, there's the uh, Tarot Tech pieces and the Stuart Audio uh, amps as well. Um, but we certainly are open to adding other third-party devices to the platform. So if you're maybe a, a user of Sure and you use their ULXD series, Dante series mics, and you'd like to be able to program them in Composer, um, we certainly encourage you to talk to their reps and uh, get them into communication with us. And, you know, whatever Dante third-party product you think would be um, handy to just be integrated in the way I'll show you here in a little bit. Um, we also give you the ability to just actually uh, browse the Dante network in general, see a unit that is on the network, say, hey, I want to receive these channels from this unit. So no need to open up Dante Controller, find a network name, and those types of things. So we'll look at that a little more uh, in depth here in a few minutes. We added a new DSP module called the Transient Suppressor that gets rid of things like, you know, somebody tapping a pen on a desk or clanking a mic or silverware flopping around on a conference desk, those types of things. It will clean up that audio from the microphones. We've also added TCP IP control capabilities, um, and then that's duplex communication. So we can receive TCP IP commands from third-party devices. We can also send TCP IP commands to third-party devices. So we'll look at how that works. And then there's a bunch of workflow enhancements um, that will certainly reduce design time and help keep you organized. So let's go ahead and look at uh, these in full. And once again, for more information, feel free to go to our website at www.symmetrics.co. And most notably, that's not .com, it's .co as in company. So the first thing we'll look here is uh, the new feature that supports the Eterotech and Dante uh, Stuart Audio Dante enabled devices. Um, right here, this diagram on the bottom shows you kind of the existing SimNet universe in uh, Composer 2.0. The first three boxes here on the left we see is the edge frame. This is a four card slot, open card slot box. Has no native I.O. and you can load any of our available cards into it. So you see this one has a four channel AEC card, a four channel mic or line level input card, a four channel line level output card and a four channel digital output card which could would support AES-CBU or SPDIF. There's a SimNet radius 12 by 8 that's 12 micro line level inputs and eight level a line level outputs and we also have the radius AEC which is eight micro line level inputs that have AEC or acoustic echo canceling capabilities. Four line level media inputs and eight line level outputs with an open card slot. So you'll see in this box it's been loaded with the telephone hybrid card. Um, there's also SimNet endpoints. These are the XN12 and the XOUT12. Um, the XN12 adds 12 channels of analog audio and throws them onto Dante. The XOUT12 can receive 12 channels from Dante and send them out line level outputs. And we also have an X control. This is adding GPIO, like pots, contact closures, and switches to make something trigger in SimNet. And there's logic outputs as well.
The, now we've also added the Aterotech endpoint devices. Um, here you see two of them, that's the DX2IO and then there's the DIO 2x2. Both of them will show up just like other endpoints in our system. Um, also we have added Steward Audio endpoints. Here you see two of them. There's actually three models supported in the new Composer 2.0 software. Um, so I will show you those now and how those are set up. Um, the most notable thing is that the uh, Aterotech and the Steward Audios act as if they're a combo box or they're acting as if they're an XIN12 or an XOUT12, although they only have two channels in or out. Um, let's go ahead and look at that in SimNet Composer. So I'm going to go to Composer. Oops. Go to Composer here. Um, if I was to drag out an edge and connect to an edge, which you have to have one of our DSPs, um, it d acts as a conductor and does all the communication between endpoints, including our XIOs, but also with the Aterotech pieces. And if I drag a Aterotech in here and click on the box, I can then locate it just as I would a like an XN12. So now I see the Aterotech, it's the DIO 2x2, and I see its MAC address and IP address on the Dante network. Just double click on it, and I should get a green check. Once I've got a green check, you'll notice that it has these two outputs, so that, that would be where I would route Dante Audio to it. Let's see, and if I come to the Dante transmits in the uh, edge, I'll see that now I have the two channels from the the uh, two by two here at Tarotech two by two to drag in. So now I could receive audio from that box. And likewise, if I had a two channel, let's say transmit, I could call this to um, a Tarotech. Make it two channels. So here's flow one, flow two. Of course, I could wire it to whatever I wanted in the system. And now when I come over to the Aterotech here, I could double click and say, here's this two Aterotech, and I want these two channels, and I click OK. Now I have those two channels routed to this uh, Aterotech piece. And like I said, very similar to, say, setting up an XN12. If I wanted to set up an XN12, I'd drag it in, double click on it, and pick the XN12 off the network. So exact same steps for programming in a tarot tech as it is for an XN12 or an XOUT12. And if I go to this XN12's properties and hit con configure inputs, here's where I could set the mic presettings or line level settings, turn on phantom power. Likewise, in the tarot tech, if I double click on it and click configure a tarot tech, here I see my two input channels with their mic presettings and phantom power and the output channels being able to set it to a line level expectation or an unbalanced level expectation. Um, just to show you the pieces that are supported then, we have the 2x2 two two for Aterotech and the 2x2 two IO. And uh, as far as the steward audio pieces go, we have the AV25-2. Two, two um, in fact, I have one of these next to me, so let's go ahead and discover it. Here we see it shows up as an Ultimo um, chip. That's its network name for Dante, and this is the type of device it is, MAC address and uh, IP address on the Dante network. And then we have CV, the CVA50-1 and the NetAV2x2 um, as well. So all of these boxes now can be programmed and configured within SimNet Composer just as if they're a SimNet box. And once again I'll mention you have a Dante product that you use a lot of if it's you know not exclusive or they don't have their own uh, DSP then it might be worth asking them um, you know if they talk to us and possibly we could add them to our platform and just create that seamless integration between endpoints um, much easier for everybody. Now, a third thing to note is, and we'll go ahead and look on the uh, PowerPoint, but the next thing, and here we're seeing this slide shows what we just went over, setting up the Aterotech. Um, but the third, uh, or the second feature I want to show you is just that we now have the ability to browse the Dante network. So you see cr the creation of a receive flow here. Receive, we'd say existing, and before we'd have to go look in Dante controller to see a network name like this, uh, UNDX2IO dash, and then it's probably a MAC address there. Um, we would have to find that network name in Dante controller. 
then load, you know, type that in manually, and then name our channels based upon whatever channels we saw in that box. So, what we've done in uh, Design or in Composer now is giving you the ability when you create the receive flow to go receive, say, third-party device, and then browse for whatever third-party device. Now, it's not showing me, it will actually show me the whole Dante network. I don't have a lot of Dante devices on here, but it's going to show me devices that aren't already connected. So I'm not going to see the, um, well, actually, I can, I can enable this, and now I'll see, oh, there's the uh, Terotech, there's the Stewart Audio, there's an XN12. You see there's an XN12 I haven't programmed, that's why it shows in the list when this checkbox is checked. But you'll notice what's cool is any unit I click on, I'm going to see what channels it's sending. Um, that guy maybe is not set up already. Let's see. Okay, so this, uh, that's just the Stewart Audio amp, so it has no inputs. That's why I didn't see any inputs from it. But if we see we have inputs and I say, oh, this is the device I'd like to receive and I'd like to receive those channels, I can just double click on it. It grabs that channel name. Um, likewise, if I wanted, I can also do a multi-select. So I could say I want this from this device and I want both channels and click create unicast flow. Now I have both those channels. Um, that can be used to receive audio from, this feature could be used to receive audio from um, SIMNet devices that are in another site file. Uh, it could also be used to receive audio Dante Auto from the Dante Virtual Sound Card, from Yamaha devices, Allen and Heath mixers. I mean, you name it. Anybody that uses Dante, you're going to see it in this browse window if it's on the same Dante network. You click on a unit, and then you just tell it how many channels or what channels you want to receive, up to eight channels at a time. And it's pretty easy to swap what you're receiving from. So um, certainly a great time-saving feature and, and of course that eliminates the need to not only have Dante controller open but in some cases you know the Dante and the control network are on separate networks so you had to bridge the com control network with the Dante network in order to have Dante controller open at the same time you have SimNet Composer open and now you don't need to do that. You can actually just use con Composer to scan the Dante network for you and receive the audio you want. Where you will need uh, to use Dante Controller, of course, is if we're sending audio to a third-party device that's not supported in Composer, we can't go tell it what to do. So you're limited as far as telling third-party devices what Dante to receive from Cement to the Aterotech pieces and the Stuart Audio pieces now. For instance, you wanted a Yamaha LS9 to receive channels from, you know, maybe this flow here that's called to Aterotech, I'd have to open up Dante Controller and click those cross points into the LS9. But for the most part, uh, I think you know that feature should streamline a lot of routing with the Dante Audio. Moving on, we now added a label feature so that the system will relabel downstream signals for you. Um, let's look at that real quick. I'll go ahead and just add a couple modules like for instance, if we call this mic one, and maybe this is mic two. This is BGM one. This is BGM. So I just create a couple labels, and I'll show you how this works. Like let's say I wanted to go through a four-channel gain module, and here I'll do the multi-wire. I hit four wire, four wires at once, and then maybe that goes to some you know, four by eight matrix mixer. And of course, going module by module, relay, labeling everything can be um, you know, fairly tedious. Now you can right-click the module that has the labels and say relabel all downstream devices. It says, are you sure you want to do this? Because it will overwrite previously um, labeled um, inputs. But I click yes, and now I can see my gain as mic 1, 2, and BGM 1 and 4. And so does the matrix mixer. Of course, it doesn't follow to the outputs because the outputs are going to then feed some other outs. But once again, if I wanted to, I could label these, and I call this like lobby, and maybe this is like my hallway, and this is grand ball one, something like that. I could have it then relabel from the output side of things to the other outs. So I could say relabel all downstream devices and click OK, and now I see my lobby, hall, grand ballroom labels on the outputs 
So it does allow you some really quick relabeling in your system to keep everything very organized, and you don't have to do it you know, input by input. Um, as I mentioned, uh, let's see, did I lose that? So um, we have a new module. It's called the Transient Suppressor DSP module. It's found um, in this Dynamics modules right along with your gates and AGCs, limiters, and so on. And I mentioned before, it's great for rooms, conference rooms with noisy environments where the noises, especially in a conference room where maybe they have lunch and they're talking to the far end and everybody's eating and clanking stuff, and it can be distracting to the far end. Um, you know, tapping pins, somebody tapping their mic a little bit, um, and it, most particularly when there's points where the mic's just open and, and I'm not talking into it, that's when those noises are very... Um, Annoying. So the transient suppressor is a kind of a smart dynamic gate. It's going to try and tell the difference between speech and the uh, clanks. Um, certainly, if the clanks happening in the middle of my word, it can't really do anything. But we're talking about those clanks that happen right before I talk or on an open mic. Um, it's going to gate those out. The normal setting is typically all you would need. Gentle might allow some of them to the, the clanks to get through, but it's going to suppress them so they won't be near as loud. Aggressive's not going to let any of them get through, but it might cut off the first couple milliseconds of the things you say, trying to be a more aggressive gate on that sense. Um, but it's certainly been very helpful in a couple conference rooms already. Another feature that uh, now now we're getting out of less DSP type features and more workflow features to just speed up your commissioning of the system. Um, we have now added a pull from unit button. If you have a design open and maybe you've got kicked offline and you don't want to push to get back online, you can click that pull online button above and it will pull the file from the currently archived site file or site now. If I hit pull and I don't have a site open or it doesn't recognize any of my units as being the archive units, then it's going to just launch you directly to the um, connection or the system manager to do that. So for instance, if I hit pull right now, actually I've already pushed to a unit, so it's like, oh, hey, do you want to pull this file? But let's go and open a blank file so you can see. So right now I had pushed that file once. I clicked pull just now it said hey I don't see anybody to pull from maybe you need to select from the network and here I could go oh and I look and find the unit has that has valid archive site files those are units I can pull from and then I can hit this go pull online from unit um, as I mentioned here's a file I've already pushed so when I click pull it's gonna go oh hey do you want to pull and it's gonna automatically pull from this unit so I'm offline if I can't push, which does kill the audio going to the boxes, I can always pull and get the file off the harbor without interrupting audio. So that's up here in the corner, this pull from unit button. That should certainly streamline some of those processes as well. Um, another thing that might be handy is to be able to copy and paste control assignments. So let's say I have a EQ. Maybe it's a dual mono module EQ, so I can't just duplicate it. I want all the same control numbers to be assigned to one as another, so a third-party control system or SIMV will control both in parallel. So in that, let's look. Let's see if I took a EQ, or maybe I'll do a loudspeaker manager for you, and we'll do a, a dual mono version. And so maybe what I have is I, I have some settings in this, and of course, then let's say I assign control numbers to it. I'm going to do it like this, assign all control numbers. So now there's 50 control numbers on this. And if I wanted this second version to run in parallel, I would need to assign all those same control numbers. So there's a couple of ways to do it, but what we've added is a new easier way. So if I edit remote control assignments on the one that's assigned, I can hit this copy assignments button. And it tells me it's copied 50 assignments for this type of a module. Go to the second unit, go to edit remote control assignments, and now I can just paste them all onto it. Hit done. And now you'll see the bottom version has all the same control assignments in the same places as the previous one. So controlling them from a third-party control system, they'll move in parallel at that point, or from a, one of our controls for that matter. 
Um, another feature that was uh, has been enhanced um, with SimNet Composer, we added the ability to trace a signal path forward to see where a particular path goes um, or a particular source goes through the signal path. However, this was limited to a single DSP box, which show you the signal path in that box. But once you went across Dante, it was off in the netherworld and, and you know, if you went into the next box, you would get no indication that that signal has passed through the Dante network. Now you can see here that this is a signal path in a single box, and this diagram is kind of easy to show you, I think, in that I right-clicked the mic input and said trace signal path forward, and I see it goes through a selector, out a router, through these SPL computers, all the way through a bunch of processing to the outputs, as well as to a four-channel send Dante. What's cool now is if I go into the other device where that Dante is sent, I can now see that those channels would be highlighted as well. So I could step through trace signal path forward in one box and go through every box in the SimNet system and it would show me via a uh, highlighted wiring um, where that source went system wide, not just in a single DSP box. Another cool feature, uh, certainly it's very common in uh, most DSP designs, or at least a lot of them, to have a fire alarm safety mute. The fire alarm gets muted, or it goes off, it triggers a relay that hits our uh, control inputs, and we trigger a mute. Up until Composer 2.0, you'd need to create a preset that muted all your outputs, and a preset that unmuted all your outputs, and then trigger those. What we've done now is the moment you start a new file in 2.0, we automatically create preset 99, or excuse me, 999, which will mute all hardware, including Dante transmit modules, and preset 1000 that will unmute all outputs as well as the Dante um, outputs. So no longer do you need to create those. You can just access them. If there's some question to whether or not that preset's been triggered, you can go to the diagnostics module, and you'll have an LED that will show you that it's been triggered. Um, of course, you have a thousand presets to use up until now, so now you have uh, 998 presets to use. We stole two of them from your, your uh, currently available presets to make these mute all and unmute all presets, and hopefully you appreciate that. Um, along those lines, the system has a uh, emergency mute, which is F2. And that also gets engaged when you push the file to the hardware. Of course, all outputs get muted, so you don't hear weird anomalies as boxes get updated. However, what happens when we see it fairly regularly is, is before clicking OK and the system ramping up after pushing the file, there are cases where someone maybe clicks and drills into a DSP without clicking that OK, and the system gets stuck in a muted state. Um, oftentimes you could step out and you'd see that this F2 mute is active, but some cases in certain screen resolutions, this button ends up below the normal view um, of the software. And so what we added was a yellow indicator. The green online checks will turn yellow for any boxes that are stuck in a mute state. So you'd see that they're muted and you could just simply hit F2 and it will ramp up and unmute everybody. But a nice uh, kind of addition there to keep people from prob you know, troubleshooting no audio output when the system's just stuck in kind of a download state. Um, vias were added to Composer. Um, originally, uh, with Composer, I want to say 1 or 1.1, 1 .1, um, they're just like our competitors pass throughs. They're little internal buses on a DSP by DSP basis. So it allows you to simplify pr your, your wiring by maybe not making wires do crazy things, you could go into a via and then return it wherever you want in the design. Um, previously, you had to drag a via out and wire it up, and then you drag that same via out somewhere else and reverse its orientation. We give you now the ability to just drag in a pair so you get the input and the output side of the via in a single drop. You change the name on one, it's going to change the name on both of them. So it's really quite a, a just kind of a time-saving technique with the vias. Um, AEC input modules have been reorganized, um, so now the block of AEC inputs are all together and the direct inputs are all together. Um, AEC1 and direct1, of course, is the same audio, except AEC1 has gone through the AEC algorithm and removed whatever was handed to the reference. Um, now, one thing that's important to note is if you like the old method where it went AEC1, direct1, AEC2, direct2, and stutter step them, 
none of your old site files will be affected. If you open them up, they'll contain their original scheme. So if you like that scheme, I would say delete your, you know, your um, design from one of those files and save it as a template, and you can use that for all your conferencing designs and duplicate that you know, radius AC or edge unit, and it will always have the original um, stutter stepped uh, configuration. Although I think for most designs, this will really help out. And then, of course, allows you to do, uh, you know, hold down eight, click this button, I can wire all eight of the AC inputs at once. So it allows that auto wire feature to be used in an uh, easier fashion. We've also added the ability to change the properties of multiple wires at once. So here in this design, I right click the wire and said trace signal path forward, and I can see everywhere that signal goes. But then if I wanted to make that uh, constantly changed a different color, so red is the selected color, I could go right click one of these select wires and choose multiple wire property. When I do that, it's going to pop open a window that then allows me, if I hit change, to access a color palette. So I could change my current black color to this purple color, and click OK here, and then click OK here twice, and you'd see that all those wires now are purple, and that helps maybe to differentiate different signal paths in a single DSP. Um, another feature for especially guys that are new to SimNet Composer, they might like this. Under Tools and your Application Preferences, we added this field, which, by the way, is checked by default. Um, what this means is once you push the file and go online, the system will automatically take you out of edit mode, so you can't do any changes that would kick you offline. Um, certainly, some you know guys that are new to the system sometimes push the file, they move something on accident or something that they just didn't realize would kick them offline, like a wire or a module placement, and then they can't figure out why they're not hearing their EQ changes and stuff like that. So this will automatically kick you out of edit mode, make sure that you can adjust faders and gains and mutes and trigger presets and things like that, but not do anything that would kick you offline. Now for me, this is super annoying because every time I go online, I need to go tools and recheck edit mode or hit the F9 button to toggle myself to edit mode. And that just gets annoying. I'm certainly used to the way SimNet's been working for years. So I unchecked that by default. Um, once again, that is under Tools. I'll show you Tools, Application Preferences, and it's this checkbox down here on the Going Online section. Um, a couple other noticeable changes is that all the meters, LED, and gauge mod modules can be labeled, and of course these will be auto-labeled with the relabel downstream devices. So now when you have some meters coming off some outputs or something, you'll be able to see what their names are. Um, so that should simplify some troubleshooting and, and putting meters on control screens and things like that. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, TCP IP support is uh, supported now, so certainly controllers like Exron have typically only been able to talk to us over RS-232 because we only supported UDP um, IP and RS-232. Now we support TCP IP, so you can see here that a Telnet session, which any Telnet software would work then, is connected to a unit and sending CS, so uh, control, um, they're sending a control to control number 250 and telling it to go to the max, and then they're getting the feedback from the DSP that 250 has been set to the max. Um, so, yeah. Um, on the inverse side of things, we also have uh, 232 string output modules. We have network string output modules. You'll see that the network string output module now supports TCP IP. Just click the TCP button, and you can send custom ASCII, binary, or hex strings. Of course, hex is just a type of binary um, out the uh, IP port um, in both uh, protocols, UDP and TCP. So pretty cool new feature there. You'd use this for maybe controlling a projector, turning it to a different input, um, or any of the features in it. Basically any network device that uh, has a protocol that's defined for third-party control, most likely we can now send them the command to um, control them from within SimNet. So that means you could have a button on an arc that changes the input of a, of a, a um, 
the projector, or maybe you hit a single button that drops the screen, turns the projector on, sets it to a specific input, and you do that all with some logic modules, um, including the network string output set to TCP. A, a couple other features I'll just mention. Uh, and not necessarily show you, but some longtime users will probably be excited for at least a couple of these. One, presets can be created and edited without going offline. So if you're filling a preset up as you build maybe an EQ preset for the evening, you don't have to get kicked offline every time you put a uh, EQ uh, cross point into the preset and then have to push the file to go online to add the next one. Now you don't get kicked offline. Um, at the end of creating your presets, you certainly would want to push that to archive those presets for good in your unit, but we've definitely streamlined that process so that you don't have to constantly push the file back to hardware. Um, another thing to mention is Composer no longer goes offline when toggling between an online site file and any other site file you might have open in Composer. So maybe you're using one design to see EQ settings or feedback eliminator settings or something. You can now toggle between those two designs and your current design that's online stays online. Um, and the last feature I'll mention is that the uh, you can always generate reports in SimNet. Um, We've changed the format slightly, so if I go to Tools and I go to Generate Report, um, now I can, uh, and you'll notice I can put all kinds of stuff in here, but the actual format, I'm just going to go to the screen, is set up now so that it's much easier to print out and compare two designs and see all of the control that's been assigned, presets have been created, and so on and so forth on a side-by-side -side comparison. So if you're looking for what changed from one working file to a non-working file, that generate report option will certainly help.